that enforces to keep a balance between social and economic development on one side and environment on other. It demands from human to gain the benefits from the resources in the best possible and proper way by taking care of the environment upon which those resources dependent and rely. According to Broadent Land Commission described the most well-known definition of sustainable development, which is meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. After reviewing the literature on sustainability, it can be concluded that main pillars of sustainability are mainly three. Environment sustainability, social sustainability and governance or we can say economic sustainability. Many organizations have discussed the same concept but with the different labels in various time periods. For example, it has been discussed under the labor of Millennium Development Goals, then in its extended and revised form as a Sustainability Development Goals, then Social Responsible Investment. It has also been discussed as Environmental, Social and Governance Management. This concept has been discussed as Islamic Finance, Responsible Finance and Investment, Green or Ethical Finance, corporate sustainability and corporate social responsibility and environment friendly investment. It has also been discussed at circular economy and some point of time it has been discussed as green finance as well. This shows that the concept of sustainability is nothing new but has gained attraction and attention and reached its peak in recent years due to rapid change at environmental, social and economic levels in the world. If we look at the global environment in recent times, we see that the global CO2 concentration increased from 277 ppm in 1750 to 415 ppm in 2021, which is around 49% increase in pollution. Global warming is a term often used interchangeably with climate change as it is one of the most important measures of global changes. Global warming refer to the rise in average global temperatures, which is linked to significant impact on humans, wildlife and ecosystem around the world because there are more factors and impact than only rising surface temperature, the term climate change is used to include these additional impacts. There is a strong consensus among scientists that human influence has been the dominant cause observed for warming trends since 20th century. This concentration of carbon dioxide is unprecedented in recent history. Scientists have reported that we need to return to a safe concentration of 350 ppm by the end of this century in order to stabilize global warming. According to the United Nations, 55% of world's population currently lives in urban areas. That number is expected to increase in 58% by 58% by 2050. The bulk of this increase in urbanization is expected to become from only a handful of countries with China, India and Nigeria projected to contribute nearly a billion people to the urban population. Cities are resource intensive, covering only 2% of the Earth's surface, yet responsible for 75% of world's resources, consumption and carbon emission. The World Health Organization estimates that over 4.2 million deaths per year are attributable to the ambient air pollution and that 90% of people living in urban areas breathe air that failed to meet its guidelines for particulate matter. 
the combustion of fossil fuel for transportation especially diesel traffic and buildings are major sources of local outdoor ambient air pollution in many urban areas the world generates 2.01 billion tons of municipal solid waste annually with at least 33% of that extremely conservatively not managed in any environmentally safe manner worldwide waste generated per person per day averages 0.74 kg but ranges widely from 0.11 to 4.54 kg through they only account for 16% of world's population high income countries generate about 34% or 683 million tons of the world's waste when looking forward a global waste is expected to grow to 3.40 billion tons by 2050 and more than double population growth over the same period overall there is a positive correlation between waste generation and incomes level daily per capita waste generation in high income countries is projected to increase by 19% by 2050 compared to low and middle income countries where it is expected to increase by approximately 40% or more how according to the swiss ray institute the largest impact of climate change is that it could wipe off up to 18% of gdp of the worldwide economy by 2050 if global temperatures rise by 3.2 degrees this forecast is based on temperature increases staying on the current trajectory and the paris agreement and net zero emissions target not being met global warming will affect 48 countries representing 90% of the world economy The impact of climate change has been forecasted to be the hardest hit for Asian economies with a 5.5% hit to GDP in the best case scenario and 26.5% hit in a severe scenario. China is at risk of losing nearly 24% of its GDP in a severe scenario compared to forecast losses of 10% for the US Canada and UK and 11 for the Europe the world economic forum's global risk report 2022 warned that billions across the world were at a heightened risk of missing out on future economic opportunities and the benefits of resilient global community exposure to air pollutants increases our risk of developing a range of diseases as well these diseases fall into three major categories cardiovascular diseases respiratory diseases and cancer it makes sense to think of these estimates as avoidable deaths they are number of deaths that would be avoided if air pollution was reduced to level that would not increase the risk of developing these lethal diseases that is of course not the only negative consequence of air pollution many millions more suffer from the poor health as a result realizing the importance in moving toward sdgs many institutions have accelerated their policy efforts in mobilizing financing to green growth investment through policies incentives standards awareness and buildings for example in 2007 the first bonds the green bonds were introduced then in 2008 world bank introduced their green bonds then again in 2009 and 2010 world bank they reached to 1 billion worth of bonds the green bonds then in 2013 another organization came up with the social sustainable and green uh, sukuk bonds and similarly in 2014 couple of other advancements were made uh, towards that area that was the year when a malaysian 
companies and Malaysian SC was also active and they issued the Sukuks in regards to the sustainable environment. Then in 2015 and 16, again, the Poland and couple of other countries, they took such initiatives. Then in 2017, Fiji, a very small island in Far East Asia, they were able to introduce the environment friendly and environmental sustainability bonds in the society and uh, attracted some investments. And similarly, in 2018, Indonesia was able to do and take such initiatives. So various organizations have been taken such initiatives recently in recent times uh, while looking at the environmental sustainability and uh, these severe situations which we have discussed previously in terms of environment and what kind of damage uh, this environmental degradation and pollution can bring to the society. Today, the world is moving towards more environmentally sustainable and economically sustainable practices that calls all the Islamic financial and other institutions to be more responsible and sustainable as it is their religious obligation as well. From an Islamic point of view, human beings are Allah Almighty's representatives on this planet Earth. And the humans are allowed to take benefits from resources of Earth with the condition of not exploiting them. Human beings have to seek to pass their lives on this planet according to the guidelines of Holy Quran and the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad By following the provided guidelines, human being can meet their current needs, but without demolishing the resources which lead to future generations in danger. Similarly, there are three pillars of sustainability and role where we can see the Islamic financial role where these organizations can play their role. It is worth to mention that Islamic finance supports the achievement of these three pillars of sustainability. According to Islamic teachings, an individual's relation with the environment is established by means of some moral principles. A man is not limited to enjoying and taking advantage of others' creations around the world. His responsibility is to preserve and protect the environment and struggle for its betterment. As Quran states, and do not commit abuse on the earth, spreading corruption. On similar lines, Rasulullah states, the whole of creation is dependent on Allah. So the most beloved to Allah is the one who is most beneficial to his creation. Even if the last hour draws near, one being on one's best behavior should not discontinue working for human welfare. As Sayyidina Anas bin Malik anhu reports that Rasulullah said, if the last hour arrives, and a man holds a date palm sapling in his hand and can manage to plant it, he should go ahead. What a beautiful tradition of Prophet Rasulullah stated at another place, whoever plants a tree and diligently looks after it until it matures and bear fruit is rewarded. Dear audience, one day, Prophet ﷺ passed by Saad bin Abi Waqas, a, pro, a, a companion of Rasulullah while he was performing, performing his wudu. The Prophet ﷺ asked, O oh Saad, what is this wastage? Sayyidina Saad replied, Is there a wastage in wudu also? The Rasulullah ﷺ said, Yes. Even if you are at a flowing water, what a beautiful hadith. Today, <clears throat> the world is witnessing a water shortage. And in coming years, that is going to increase. What a beautiful message of Islam we see about sustainable environment. 1400 years ago, Rasulullah is stating and suggesting to Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, O oh, Sa'ad, even though doing wudu is religious obligation, 
you are doing it for your prayer and Allah Almighty. But remember, even for religious praying or religious obligation, do not waste the resource of water. A beautiful message how a Muslim should look after and be worried and careful about using the environment or whatever is available. Reminding Muslims of how important it is to keep the environment sanitary to maintain the community. There is another hadith of Rasulullah in which he states, be aware of three acts that cause you to be cursed. First, relieving yourself in shaded places that people utilize. In a, second, in a walkways or in the watering places. That is the message where you have been asked to look after wherever you live and keep your places clean and do not waste or destroy the natural habitat and resources. This world, another hadith of Rasulullah in which narrated by Sahih Muslim, the world is sweet and green and verily Allah is going to install you as a wise regent in it in order to see how you act. The Prophet would perform ablution, his wudu, with only one mud, which is equal to half a liter of water, and would perform a ritual bath with one sa, which is equal to two liters of water, with, and up to five muds, which were equal to two and a half liters of water. So this much water he would use for his bath and wudu only. And today, what we are doing with all these natural resources and this whole world is facing this water shortage. And in near future, coming years, this is going to be worsen. So, discussing these narrations and traditions of Prophet Wasallam, the reason behind is to bring the importance of looking after the environment and environmental sustainability. And the scholars are sustainably agreed on the concept of, uh, substantially agreed on the concept of sustainability that encompasses at least ecological integrity, social equality, and economic security. Dear audience, when Islam has put such emphasis on looking after the environment and environmental sustainability, so the question arises, when organizations like Islamic financial institutions, Islamic banks, Islamic educational institutions, and all those entities, they may be fintech related, they may be digital economic related organizations or governments or banks, whatever they are, if they are associated with Islam or working under the banner of Islamic concepts and ideology. So this becomes more responsibility of them uh, than all other organizations working in the world that they become more aware of environmental sustainability and they become more active towards it than every other organization working in this world. So to me today, one of the most important Whenever we say the, the main objectives of Islamic financial institution is that social responsibility along with profit making. But from now on, I would suggest we should make three that social, in, social finance and more profit making. But then the third element should be looking after and uh, working for environmental sustainability as well, because that's the future of the future and that is what our next generation will lose if we will not be aware and we will not be working towards it due to this the corporations which have aimed to attain sustainability have to think above the concept of fulfillment of economic standards in their decision making by analyzing environmental effect relating to biodiversity and carrying capacity of ecosystem and social impacts, for example, different culture and standards of life among different humans, 
social groups and also their upcoming generations. Environmental sustainability demands availability of pure and clean drinking water, sustainable management of sanitation, and ensure the provision of reliable, affordable, modern energy for every single person living on this planet. Islamic finance industry, which has become the point of discussion and attraction of people in recent times, institutions and governments around the globe. In this aspect, Islamic finance industry is also playing their role, as I have discussed there it and attain global environmental to attain global environmental sustainability. In this regard, a number of social responsible investments are being made or green scoops have been introduced and launched at global level to support by financing those projects which are environment friendly. For example, in 2012, the Climate Bonds Initiative with the collaboration of Clean Energy Business Council of the Middle East and North Africa and was introduced. Then Dubai based Gulf Bond and Association formed and started the Green Scoop Working Group to develop and endorse the concept of Green Scoops, which matches with the low carbon criterion. Likewise, in 2014, Security Commission of Malaysia re-edited its Sukuk guidelines by including the new requisites for launching of SRI Sukuks. The revised Sukuk guidelines elucidates that the revenue of SRI Sukuk can also be utilized in preservation of natural and ecological resources, save the energy usage, enhance the renewable energy usage and diminish the greenhouse gas discharge. In 2012, Two Australian solar companies named Solar Guys International and uh, Mitabu maintained to generate funds having value worth around 100 million US dollars for 50 MW photovoltaic project based on Green Sukuk in Indonesia. This project was basically designed in Malaysia and was fully funded under a power purchased agreement, Islamic power president agreement islamic development bank idb has also aimed to fund around 180 million pilot project and us worth of 180 million us dollar projects in clear energy in its 56 member countries around the globe international finance facility for immunization based in uk also launched sri sukuk in 2014 based on murabaha having value of 500 million US dollars for children immunization in the poorest countries of the world via Gavi. The vaccine alliance to assist in the protection of tens of millions of children against vaccine preventable diseases. This, all these examples show the activeness of Islamic finance industry in attaining the target of global environment sustainability. Many studies depict that over 80% of stakeholders agreeing with the notion that Islamic finances have social responsibilities, preferring more new initiatives in Islamic finance industry to circumscribe both social and environmental welfare. Islamic social finance advocating a sharing economy and promoting redistribution could play a significant role in helping achieve the twin development objectives of ending extreme poverty globally by 2030 and promoting shared prosperity by rising the incomes of a bottom 40% of the population. Such interventions involving Qard Hassan, Zakat, Sadaqat, Waqf, Sukuk, and microfinance and such more products can potentially address the basic needs of extremely poor and destitute and create a social safety net. But at the same time, it is necessary that Islamic financial institutions invest more and think more responsibility to make this whole environment as well sustainable. For that, in the end, I would like to suggest a couple of give some recommendations for such financial institutions uh, where we can work more and harder 
to improve the environment of this world as well and uh, become more responsible in that way. So Islamic financial institutions should be financing environment friendly projects more like electric vehicles, recycling plants. So whenever the applicants, they come to financial institutions with their projects, one way is to look at the uh, projection of profits or returns coming from that applicant. And second way is to propagate and promote and see whatever the project has been proposed by a business project has been proposed by the needy or applicant coming to the financial institution. Is it environment friendly? Is it going to damage the environment or is it going to benefit the environment? So I would say the financial institutions should become more careful in terms of analyzing the applications and should support, benefit or propagate or promote such applicants in a way by supporting with the uh, better rates to them, better uh, packages to them, better products to them, to motivate them that uh, coming up with an environment friendly project is the right thing to do. So electric vehicles is one of the options, recycling plant is one of the options, using of technology in a manner that it does not increase carbon emissions. Instead, it helps to produce less garbage as well. FinTech industry is moving towards that side. And uh, if we could look at the energy consumption aspect as well, while using the FinTech technology, FinTech industry for Islamic banking and finance. So that could be another way moving toward paperless mechanism and couple of other such technologies which could be proved to be environment friendly and uh, Islamic financial institutes uh, would be considered playing role for uh, sustainable environment of this world and uh, such institutions should boost entrepreneurship especially youth they should attract youth and uh, so that they can come up with better ideas um, and uh, they should fund their ideas to look after the environment and come up with better proposals which are more environment friendly. Similarly, linkages with academia to promote awareness of environmental sustainability and provide research grants and funding to the students should be another important uh, funding and investment area for Islamic financial institutions and not just uh, the commercial financing, but they should invest in the youngsters and next generation and on their ideas and the ideas should be which are more uh, sustainable and uh, environment friendly. Similarly, Islamic financial institutions have to join hands and make international consortium to help the governments, especially the third world countries as well uh, to create a development or co friendly society while providing Loans to business fina Islamic financial institutions can ask businesses to go environment sustainable. For example, people coming to Islamic financial institutions with their applications. So they have a power, a slight, um, a, a little kind of a power upon the applicant because they are there to get the loan. That is the time when they can spread awareness as well that uh, uh, it is look if you uh, go towards this kind of a business model that would be more environment friendly and that's way that way islamic financial institution will be uh, playing their role in propagating the true and right practices in relation to the environment uh, friendly things similarly a special rates or packages could be offered to environmental sustainable businesses in the society islamic financial institutions have to increase the issuance of green sukooks as well so these were a couple of recommendations but i'm sure there are so many experts uh, we have and uh, in this conference um, in last two days and we'll be listening um, at the moment so they can come up with many more better recommendations and ideas. But the bottom line is that uh, uh, along with every other responsibility, 
along with competing with conventional banks along with competing uh, in profit making along with competing in coming up with a better social financial products along with in improving the social financial and economic status of the society looking after our environment and this world a blessing of allah almighty is a very dear and important issue today as we have discussed it is damaging us and our next generation in so many different ways so this is high time as islamic financial institutions we stand by and we come up with an idea and a call that we are doing it not because that united nation has introduced sdgs we are doing this not because that a united nation or any international organization demands that from us but we are doing that because our religion has asked us to do so allah almighty and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has asked us to do so we are doing that as a vice regent of allah almighty on this planet earth then we will be able to achieve our targets and inshallah whatever we will do a baraka from allah almighty will automatically enter in our uh, efforts which we will put towards looking after the environment of this planet earth and last but not least just wanted to share a news as i have spoken on environmental uh, sustainability and how important it is and what islamic institutions and other islamic institutions should be doing a good news there is an international organization uh, of indonesia who rank various universities around the world uh, and their campuses in terms of uh, environmental sustainability and how much environment friendly those university campuses are so alhamdulillah minhaj university was also very highly ranked on that list recently because of uh, those practices which are very much environment friendly and eco uh, uh, friendly uh, practices by our campus so just just a news and a good news wanted to share with our uh, participants of this conference similarly every institution which has uh, islamic association with it we have to be more careful and responsible in that terms in the end again i would like to congratulate all the organizers of this conference who have been working so hard our social media team our minhaj tv team our um, the whole conference secretariat um, they have been working so hard in, in many couple of months and then especially last two days available at the campus we all are virtually attending this conference but the conference secretariat they are there on campus looking after all the operations and activities of this conference so this is uh, once again congratulations for a wonderful job and a very successful event and i congratulate all the participants and i am very much hopeful that you all have learned from last these two days and i thank you all our international partners our brothers who have been with us for last 5 years for uh, uh, joining hands helping us to have another beautiful and successful event thank you very much wassalam thank you very much dr husain mohyuddin qadri for your keynote speech your talks are every time enlightening for us and giving us new ideas a kind of brainstorming for us listening to you every time dear participants now it is the time for the launch of our very innovative global